it is currently 3 50 in the morning um i came home after being out with my friend to my room being completely empty no clothes no shoes um nothing was on my bed no pillows no blanket no sheets my room was completely cleared out um so i called my cousin and i told her that i'm not staying here no more um packed me what i could because i don't know where most of my stuff is at and um yeah that's that's where we are at right now um lashes fucked up because i literally broke down crying because i i don't know what the fuck i did um to deserve that but when you have narcissistic parents it really doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you do um yeah so yeah a drink that don't have nothing to do with nothing that's my child the only thing i don't want her to do around her is drink i do not want a dcfs case because she went around acting drunk okay, sure. i don't want that I, it's, and this is my child you are a grown adult you are 40 plus years old yes that is fine i just don't want my kid walking around in school acting drunk and then they call me and they're asking me questions please take your phone girl back i don't know where she get that from not from me i don't drink so clearly it has to be the only person that drinks around her which is you Oh, oh, and I asked the car to stop and I asked Amari to stop and they said, okay, you're the only one with a problem. I drink. Main generational curse that I know I'm going to break is the one where y'all don't be taking mental health serious in the black community. You ain't finna tell me, oh, why you depressed? You got food on the table, clothes on your back. Bitch, cause I listen to you ranting every day about the bills that you can't pay. I'm over here sad cause I can't get good grades in school. But yeah, I mean, I got a burger in my mouth. I should, I should be chipper and happy. Bitch, no. My whole life, they always told me, kids ain't got no won't shut up. My house, my house rules. Okay, well, now that I'm big and grown, I'm letting that shit know. Everything on the flow. I'm not disrespectful with it, but if you hurt my feelings or if I feel like you was disrespectful to me, I'm letting you know. Prime example, my mama asked me what's wrong. I told her mama, no, just stop asking me because I'm not ready. I'm going to probably shut down if you keep asking me. I'm, I'm not going to answer it. She's talking about some, ah, that's that white people shit. Girl, what the fuck do me feelings, my feelings have to do with a fucking white person? Girl, the fuck, that really made me hot too. I almost hung up, but it's like she don't know. She over here still with that damn near that slave mentality and it's sad. Y'all, I still look at my mama sideways when she told me that the only reason she reads my journals is because I could have been building a bomb. If the first sentence said, I like this boy, and the second one said, my mama made me cry, where the fuck is the bomb instructions? That's a big-ass invasion of privacy. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. This day, I cannot fuck with that. I'm breaking all that shit. When I have kids, y'all, my kids gonna be so, like, wild. Because I'm already wild, but, like, I know only a little bit, bitch. I'm gonna start pouring into them, like, bitch, I can't wait. Got custody of my six siblings at the age of 26. My mother gave up and have been neglecting them. Some of them were even sleeping on the floor. She wouldn't let them shower or wash their clothes. The household was extremely toxic and she was barely home. They was basically taking care of themselves because she was always out with random men. She threw away most of the furniture I bought them. I got tired of the neglect and filed for custody. I picked them up from Charlotte and brought them to ITL with me. Now we are staying in a mini mansion until we find our forever home. <laughs> I just had to fucking block my mom and my grandma. This shit hurt. I just want a fucking relationship with my family. But I can't keep fucking being hurt in the process. My children getting hurt. I'm getting hurt. God, please keep me protected. Keep, please keep me and my family protected. I gotta move on. I gotta move to my higher self. And I can't keep letting my family and their trauma pull me back down. I can't. This shit fucking hurt, man. Fuck. The back and forth is too toxic. God, just keep me and my family protected with your divine love. That was you. We don't eat. You have no shame. You no, have, you have no, no shame. No.
No me arrepiento de haberlo hecho. Que al cabo tú ni siquiera valoras lo que yo hago por ti. I bought all of this. My no money. Tío, no seas mentirosa. Porque this la mitad, is mine. I la bought mitad, all of this with my comprado. money. Este cajón, yo lo that was the gift that Esta you picked primera, up from the trash. Pero yo lo pongo. It's not the same as the things I value because I bought all of this. I did. I things I never forgive my family members for. And I'm healing, so I don't give a fuck how nobody feel about this video. Number one, I never forgive my family members for not having my back and not saying anything when it came to me. But always, always be little and talk shit about me when I was in the wrong or when I did something wrong. Never forgive them. Never forgive them. Number two, I never forgive my family members for telling my motherfucking personal business. If I came to you, if I confided in you and told you something that was going on in my life personally, that was for you and only your motherfucking ears only. Why the fuck is you telling my business to everybody in the fucking world, nation, United States of America? I will never forgive you. It's just a warning. Watch who y'all tell y'all business to because family be snakes and they only want to know your business just so they can use it against you, especially if they don't like you for real. Number three, I never forgive my family for being the reason that I have low self-esteem growing up. It was always, oh, you crazy, you bipolar, you dramatic, or or you think you cute. Looks not gonna get you nowhere in life. That ain't gonna get you nowhere. You gotta be smart. Like I was just fucking dumb. Your feet big. You fat. Ooh, let's not forget the name Kicker, though. Or Cora. Y'all know Cora from Tyler Perry. Yeah, they used to call me that. They wasn't calling me Cora because she was crude in the face. They was calling me Cora because she was thick in the waist. And as a child, that shit used to hurt me so bad. But they didn't know what they was doing to me because I used to laugh that shit off. I used to laugh a lot of shit off like, oh, yeah, that's cool. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Go in the room and cry my motherfucking eyes out. Number four, I never forget my family for always making me feel left out and alone. Who can just call me the unpaid babysitter because that's all I fucking did. Babysit for free. We could be out of town on a family vacay or the family could come in town. Whatever it was, I'm the babysitter. It wasn't no, oh, do you want to come with us? Do you want to, you know, you want to go? No, it was, oh, no, no, she's babysitting y'all. She's babysitting so y'all can leave y'all kids. Y'all can leave y'all kids. What the fuck? And now that I'm older, I cannot find a babysitter. I'm with my son 24-7, losing all this fucking weight because I be so fucking stressed out and overly stimulated. Nobody help me. Nobody check up on me. Nobody call. Nobody send for him. Nobody do shit, but it's cool. Fuck him. Number five, I never forget my family for not being a safe place for me. I couldn't get on here and tell y'all one time I came home and actually felt like I was at peace or I was just genuinely happy or the house was just filled with love. Never. But basically, I was raised off survival, not love, which makes me a little different. It causes me to be in defense mode like fucking crazy. So I may come off as hard, aggressive, all of that shit. But in reality, I just need to know if you're real, if you're genuine. Like, it's a process with me, honestly. And I don't give in easily. I'm a tough cookie. But I'm not gonna hold you. I'm ready to heal. I'm ready to change. I'm ready for peace. I'm ready for better days. I'm ready to not let this be a part of who I am, who I am becoming. You know what I mean? I just want to break generational curses and make sure that my child does not grow up and feel the same shit that I feel. He gonna be raised off love and survival. I'm gonna teach his ass how to survive, but in the process of me teaching him how to survive, I'm gonna love on him so much to the point where he ain't gonna have to go out in the world and, and look for validation in no motherfucker and nobody and, and nothing, period. I felt more love from outside people than I did with family to the point where it got to the it got so bad where I would just be staying in other motherfucking house. I would just rather stay anywhere else other than home. But I can keep this shit going on all day, all day, all day. Like, I, I don't understand why you think all your problems are my problems, Emily. They're not. Oh, you we, do. We did not want three hundred dollars of each paycheck going to you. That has nothing to do with me, though. Call the child support enforcement office, Emily. They, they will not do anything until we go to court. Then I can't. But I just thought since you have the money and you know what. You, you know that we have lived in a homeless shelter for over six months. We're not anymore. I dug myself out by my fucking skin of my teeth. Are y'all not working? Like y'all have both have jobs? Because I'm assuming like, like I don't I don't understand. Yes, Brooke. I work twelve hour days. I bust my ass. Then why are you complaining about this money that Jeff owes to his kids? <laughs> He doesn't owe you six hundred dollars a goddamn month. That's ridiculous. No, I'm talking you about can't pay your fucking house payment, Brooke. 
fucking stupid. That's not, that's what the Pokemon Th That's that whole point, though. Like, they... Let me ask you something. Okay. Could you survive if somebody took $600 of your salary a month? Yes, I could. Could you survive? Yes, I could. No, you fucking could. Wanna know why? You want to know why? Because I work together with Dakota. We work together in regards to our finances to make sure everything and everybody in our household and everything that we own yeah, is man, taken I care of. Go over there. I'm busy. Go over there and clean. I'm busy. Don't take my phone. Hey, what the fuck is your problem? How do I do my baby daddy is out here running his mouth in these streets so let's go ahead and pop it off okay because you out here telling people that you give me 500 dollars a month but you don't give me a goddamn thing not a nothing not a nada these right here these right here i had to buy yesterday okay you ain't seen your motherfucking kid in over a month over some shit that happened that you out here telling people's a motherfucking sunburn but really the doctor ruled it as a burn and the reason why i have temporary custody is because you have no motherfucking explanation on where it came from or how it happened but what cps did do was give you the option to have supervised visits but you won't take them Okay, but where are these at though? Where are these at? Because even if, okay, even if that's the situation, which it is, okay, even if that was the situation when it came to me, I'ma still do everything I need to do when it comes to my child, right? Where's this at? Where they at? Where are you at, bro? Where the fuck you at? Cause you ain't here. You ain't here and you ain't doing it. The only thing you doing is manipulating motherfuckers around you into believing you something that you motherfucking not. Like that's what the fuck you best at. Your daily affirmations of what you tell yourself every single day is out of this motherfucking world. Okay? You can't even finesse me into giving a fuck that you popping out with the next motherfucking bitch that you probably going around and manipulating other bitches into believing that that's your motherfucking foster sister as if y'all ain't fucking. But you can't even finesse me in the right ways to give a fuck because you don't do what the fuck you need to do when it comes to my child okay you out here telling people oh she's selling her shit is you salty bro is you salty because see don't nobody know that i had you make your own motherfucking page so i so i could sell the content don't nobody know that though do they don't nobody know that you was begging me for my content don't nobody know that the reason why i have not talked to you in the last motherfucking month is because i cut you off me that was my doing not yours not motherfucking yours. You over there talking about always oh, hard to co-parent with a retard. Bitch, when do you co-parent? When do you even parent? Okay? You can't even distinguish his and he's in a motherfucking sentence, bitch. You want to be funny? You want to hee hee har har? Just make sure that you more funnier than me before we start going. Okay? <laughs> Just make sure you funnier than me. You cannot even finesse me in the right motherfucking ways to give a fuck about the next fucking bitch and that's all you want to do that's all you want to fucking do that's all how many times in the last month have you took your spark car and rolled over to the next person's house how many times but you couldn't roll over and get your kids some motherfucking diapers regardless of how you felt regardless of how you felt why is it why is it that you continue to run your bitch ass mouth but i'm the one that's out here doing it day in and day motherfucking out you salty as fuck you stopped this fuck because I don't need you. I don't need you. You out here talking about how you get it out the mud. Bitch, you wouldn't have had to get it out the mud 45 times if you would have treated the bitches that you was with right in the motherfucking first place, bitch. You out here popping out with a bitch when really you should be popping out with some motherfucking diapers. And I ain't hating because that bitch is fresher than you are, okay? The creases in your motherfucking shirt, they match the creases in your Air Forces. Fix it, bitch. Fix it. When you no longer talk to your family members, there's always someone who tries to tell you, oh, that's still your ex, that's still your Y, like you should still talk to them. No, I shouldn't because that person know what they did to me. Why should I have to tell them what they did? Why should I have to try to make amends at it? Why should I try to fix things when you know that you intentionally tried to hurt me or you know you hurt me or you did something to me and you know you were in the wrong and you have no accountability and you don't take up for your, you know, for what you did. You don't speak out, you don't say anything. Why should I have to come to you, another grown adult, and tell you what you did to me? I'm not doing that. I have gotten so past the people pleasing stage and the trying to make everything right type of phase. Long as the Lord know I got a pure heart and pure intentions about what I do, I shouldn't have to come back and try to chase you to get you to respond or try to do something to me. When you made that bed, you gonna lay in it with me. 
You know, I used to always think about the other person before I made my decision. I was so conscious and so self-aware saying like, well, maybe, you know, I did X, Y, Z. But then I realized some people are just messed up individuals. And it doesn't matter how good of a person you are and how good of a person you may be. There's always going to be that someone that's still going to do things to you. Okay, that's just life in general. But I don't care who leaves. If you hand me the scissors, don't be mad when I cut you out of my life. Friends, family, it does not matter to me. I'm not making making amends with no one I, I, I'm not doing it I'm not doing it I'm not doing it if you can't see the wrong in what you did but you can always see the wrong in what I've done or what you think I've done to you then we don't need to have no conversation or no friendship situation or no nothing anyways we're gonna forever be family yes but when you've done something to me done deal you're done you're done I, you're done it's more important to be pretty and educated. More important to be a follow body than a leader, right? Okay. I'm not a parent who likes to use physical discipline. Come here, you're gonna learn today, girl. No physical discipline. Mom, don't mom me, no. You had your warning, you had your chance. I told you to listen. I told you stop disobeying my rules. I told you being cute ain't shit. If you have no education, I told you stop disobeying me. I told you to listen and do as you're supposed to. I told you to do good in school. I told you to do your daily routine and you yet to even do any of it. And you thought you were disobeying me today and I was not coming to cut this hair off. You're sadly mistaken because you thought being pretty was so much better than being educated or listening to your mom, right? Yes, this is what happens when you don't listen to your mom. School comes first, right? Yeah. And if you have no education, then you have nothing, right? Yeah. So if you're not listening in class and you're not behaving and you're not listening to your teachers and you're not handing in your schoolwork, do you deserve to have extensions in your hair? No. Do you deserve to have the latest styles in your hair? No. Do you deserve to have nails in your hair? No. Your hair will go back, right? Yeah. You can wear rigs, right? Yeah. I can't add extensions back, right? Yeah. So you know what I did. I did out of love, right? Yeah. And the only reason why I posted was because of what? You think that these these Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok posted. and Roblox is yeah. your life. You posted because you... I didn't embarrass you. You embarrassed yourself, right? Yeah. My child, a lesson. We try to be better than our parents. And I try really hard to be the best mother that I can be. And for the most part, I know I'm doing a fantastic job. We try to be better than our parents and learn different ways and try to do better. Get up out of here. I'm recording this. You need to, I keep saying the stuff that you're saying. Mm -hmm. We need you gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm calling the police because I need Call to get out of here. Yeah, that's fine. So sad. I'm sorry, baby. I'm so sad. Poor mama. No, poor you. Poor Amana. Poor, poor you. Baby. Yeah, hey, we, I'm yeah, calling. Hey, uh, I have an address nine. By the way, that's my dad's one, girlfriend. One, two, he still talk about his Stirling ex girlfriend. Lake Circle, Covington, Georgia. She does. Yeah. She's funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a um a 22 year old adult in the house. We need a. Yeah. So my dad made me miss my interview. I got upset, and he blamed me for. I said, "How are you blaming me for? It? You knew what time." She keeps saying, "Poor her son doesn't even like her." Anyways. So she keeps, I was telling him he made me miss my interview, I was upset, that's a normal reaction. And he started yelling and stuff because he got a temper. So, and this is his new girlfriend, by the way, this is her house. So she keeps saying she's sorry, but she needs to be sorry for herself, she needs to be sorry for herself. Yes, her name is Kalia Francis and we need her from in here. Oh, be sorry for yourself. Your son doesn't like you. It don't matter. Yeah, it does matter. Who she got a bad attitude. Who you Where's your family? Weren't you just upset? My nope, little don't like you either. I'm never. Who don't like me? Like you who think? Don't like me? You Kenya, think? Don't give, don't who don't like me? She's Kenya. all this on camera, so Kenya. she goes. Kalia, <laughs> Kalia, okay. Kalia called me and we're talking about. Um, um, DeAndre putting his hand on Kayla and all that type of stuff. This is where all uh, this is where my energy to come from. Mm -hmm. So this is what she does. What she what she does is she try to play the victim and she try to kick up endless and drama and all that type of stuff because we we been we been, yes we had nine one one two and I'm I'm talking to my girlfriend and my daughter is here and so you could understand what's happening right. 
We bend over backwards for this girl. Bend over backwards for her. And it's, uh, this is the tired of the She's disrespect. Trying to stop you. Yeah. I'm sad. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Come on. I mean, Kenya, hush. I'm sad. You're sad. Where's your baby father? Why aren't your baby father in your life? Like, come on now. Where's your family? My name and father, we're seeing you though. You're happy. <laughs> My, my dad still talks about his ex like you're not special like all his kids know about that act that's Maya right. act everybody that's yeah right. so you're sitting there feeling special like for what poor baby yeah sad. poor Kenya poor, thing. poor Kenya we need to have the um, viewpoint on say you. it again okay viewpoint yeah, yeah thank you I don't want to get close. I need How to see. Point. I need to see you packing and stuff too. God, this is uh -huh. happening. But you just broke the door. It's my door. door. It, look, that goes to Shami here. With the door locked, I was packing my stuff. He broke the door open. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to call you. Kenya, you're not losing weight. I'm confused. Okay. Viewpoint. Y'all, so this is his girlfriend. She's um telling him to call some other people. All this. Yeah, I have a lot of followers, so this is gonna be seen. Anyways, um, I was just trying to simply pack my stuff. My friend said she's coming to get me. And apparently the my dad broke the door open because stuff was being said. I heard him say most of most of them yeah, yeah. Um yeah, no, no, because you guys are not gonna say I'm doing this, I'm doing that. No, you're not you're the person. apparently Look, I was packing my stuff. So it wasn't like I was just sitting in here. So I'm 22 years old. I'm 22. My birthday is October 10th. I was born in 2000. Nursing a woman. Nursing your daughter while drinking alcohol. So now I'm nursing my daughter. Now I'm nursing my daughter. I got alcohol. Why are you living in your dad's This is This is what happens. This is what happens when he gets mad. This is exactly what happens. Where's his other his other daughter? Come on. Hurry up. I'm I don't feel comfortable. You call the police so they can watch me pack. go ahead. Okay. You call the police so they can watch me pack. I don't. And then he's touching my daughter's stuff. He called the police, so I'm not doing nothing till they get here, so they can't say I did anything. What we say, mental? Yeah, mental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why. That's why she was in a mental hospital for so many days. I, mm -hmm. I saw. I thought that she could do it without medication. So now, so I look, so look. Now I'm mental. Now I'm mental. I thought she could have done Now I'm having a mental now. crisis. Now I'm having a mental crisis. Yeah, we're in Covington. She have a, she have a history. We're in Atlanta, Georgia. We're she in have a history of being in a mental hospital. Yeah, so we got we got proof of all that. Yeah, go ahead. History. Go ahead. I so I try I try my best. Who's to more hot? Listen, I'm calm. But I am not capable of He's trying to break me out of character. He's trying to break me out of character. He's trying to break me out of character. That's okay. Look at my baby. The baby should be. Yeah. In her own house and her mom and her dad. And that's literally what we were working on. That's why I hardly be here. I stopped coming you after a while. Be here you're 20 but anyways, old. you guys hear the comments in my voice. Yeah, I'm 22. Old yeah, I'm 22. I was born in 2000. My birthday's October 10th. I'm 22 in my dad, my dad's girlfriend's room. Yep, I do agree on that. Mm-hmm. I know she's going to another friend house because she's yep. homeless. I'm not homeless, but okay. Okay. All right, there's the police. So yeah, I'm gonna um keep recording for my safety. So she was gone for like Hey, what's going on? Hey, can I talk to you with the door closed? Yeah, that's fine. My body cam is on, so Okay. And I'm just re I'm just recording yes, for my safety. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm trying to talk without crying. So um, I'm in the process of moving. Me and my friend have a house, and she told me that, you know, we'll have to start going half on rent. My dad called me a bunch of times asking me my moving, but I didn't want him to know, you know, type stuff. So I'm like, I'm gonna need a job, you know. Um, I had an interview, they said they're gonna hire me. I even have the messages. So I'm like, I was excited. I'm like, this is my life's gonna start, you know. So then, um, I told my dad last night, you know, can you take me to the interview? He agreed. He also, her dad was supposed to come get her last night, but my dad said, can I just spend a whole day with her, please? I'm like, yeah, of course. This morning, um, he was like, I forgot I have to go to the bank and all this other stuff. So he's like, I can't, you know, take you right now. I don't know if you're going to make it on time. So I'm like, 
I was like kind of frustrated like okay well you know are you gonna take the baby he said um I'll be back so then I'm calling I even I have the messages everything I'm calling texting no answer as a woman 22 year old trying to can, can you see you see you see what's going on can I talk to you uh, sir can I talk to you can I can I talk to you sir can, but what they're trying to do is what they're trying listen sir can you sir can I talk to you sir and she just called the sight war but everything's on camera but this my little sister disappeared she left the car on the freeway because my dad gets like this and she disappeared my dad hasn't talked to her I just called my sister like this is this this is the stuff we deal with. So his girlfriend, um, actually, she was hyping his head when I heard him. That's when I started taking my phone out because I know my dad has a temper. He broke that door because um, he heard me telling somebody like, "Come get me in the baby." That's why he did that. And I might I locked the door because I didn't feel safe. But see, as the door's still locked, but it's broke. So then my baby is crying, and I'm like, Dad, don't do this in front of my child. This, that, that. He's like, he started taking all the baby clothes out the closet. He was telling me to get the fuck out all of this stuff. He has a known temper. We know that. So that's, I felt safe with being, and I even said, I'm not going to get up or do nothing. I'm going to wait till the police get here because he kept getting in my face and all that stuff. And he's like, get the fuck out, get the fuck out now. I was in the, as you can say, I was in the process of packing, but then his temper is what made me like, okay, let me put my camera out. So she comes in here, and she She's, you know, it's all on camera. She's talking her mess or whatnot, hyping him up. And then they're talking about CPS and getting my baby taken and talking about um, my dad. All right, y'all, story time. So I'm going to try to do this because I need to shower or whatnot. I am okay. I am. And if I can put screenshots or whatnot, y'all tell me how to do that. So, but I, it has been a hell of a day. That's why I wasn't able to, you know, but so this is what happened. Uh, yesterday, I had a new job opportunity that was going to help me pay my bills because my thing is I was going to move out but I need to upgrade my job and the, and the pay or whatnot. So I explained that to my dad. So then basically, we I had a plan. So my baby father was supposed to come get the baby at night so I could get up in the morning, go to the job handle business, and then we switch off because we both are trying to move it together and nobody knows. The reason why is when my dad knows I'm trying to move, he makes stuff hard for me. So when he be saying, oh, you don't be here, or he will say, like, are you moved? Did you move out? I will say, no, I'm coming home, and I'll come home just so he don't really see what I'm doing because I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm moving. Then next thing you know, I'll try to come home, the door will be locked, the alarm will be on, or it would just be petty stuff. So then, those are for the ones, by the way, that was all like, oh, you did your own, you grown this down the third. That's what I was doing, honey, baby. Like, literally, that's what I was doing. But, um, you all just don't understand my situation. So anyways, so then, he's like, I'll keep the baby for a day. You know, her dad don't need to come get her. I want to spend time with her. Mind you, he, I'm like, okay, because I don't be there like that. And he wants to see his baby, his grandbaby. So I'm like, well, fuck it, why not? So then, the next day come, I'm dressed suited and booted, my baby's in our car seat. He says, oh yeah, I forgot I need to go to the bank. So I be busy, I be having stuff to do. So I, when I come back, I could take y'all. I was like, okay, it was already like 8.20, 8.19. My appointment's not to 9.30, so I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm calling and texting, no answer. Blowing his phone up, no answer. He comes back with groceries and his girlfriend. So then me naturally, it's 10 o'clock. So I'm like, you know, so he's putting up the groceries and stuff and I'm calling my job and I'm like, hey, I'm about to be on the way. And they're like, it's fine, just don't come. So then I go and I said, I go in my room, I close the door and my dad was like, all right, you ready to go? I said, dad, there's no point in me going, it's too late. They don't need me no more. And I said, I just need some time right now. And I just started crying because I'm just like, he don't, I feel like he noticed that I'm in the process of moving. He, something, he knows something, but it's like he does stuff like this and makes shit harder for me. So then he comes to my room. He said, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Um, You be quick to blame him blame yourself he started talking to me like that and that's when I was like you know what I called my friend and I said can I come over and when I made that statement because she was gonna speak she said yeah come on bring the baby when I when we made that statement that's when he told me I can just get the fuck out and pack all my shit and go I just think you're the one in the wrong if you can think that you can say fuck you to me exactly exactly right she is right She's 18 years old and how many times have you called her a bitch and said fuck you Alyssa and you think that's okay, ever? 
ever, and why would I be with you for right now or even the last year? I'm sorry. Well, it's going to be more than that. It's just, like, he has never done that to your kids, you know what I mean? And nor would I. He treats your kids so good, and yeah. I had to give my opinion in those two videos, y'all. I wanted y'all to see the difference between, in, the, in my opinion, in the first situation, the dad was literally betraying the daughter in front of his of her stepmother of step the girlfriend I, I believe the girlfriend yeah so you know and she was antagonizing her kept antagonizing her like yo yeah i mean you need to stay in your place you're not supposed to do that like and then for the dad to just allow it it's crazy it's not even like i don't know how you could just betray your daughter like that i understand you want her out of your house but you just betraying her like that in front of somebody and making them giving them ammunition against them like that is not cool Whereas in the second video, you seen that, like you seen the daughter confront the stepmother and the dad stepped in and said what? He checked her because that's how we should be. You check them and let them stay in the place because, yo, you're not supposed to, like in this day and time, we have a lot of like families combined, like stepmothers, this and that, like, you know, and for someone to come in like and, and, and disrespect your kids and you allowing it. <laughs> How how you gonna expect your kids to respect you? And also, how do you even respect expect your kids to go and respect other men, or even think they're gonna be safe with a man if their own father is doing this to them in front of these females? Like, I feel like, in my opinion, it's just not cool. Like, y'all need to to have a way of how you can, you know, generalize and I mean, take a, a sit down and general have a like a meeting together and just confront the situation without like like escalating because once it escalates and it gets to the point where now the police is involved now it's so hard to come back from it that's how you see a lot of people cut off their family members i mean can you blame them